In today's video, we're going to talk about one of the biggest mistakes that your app is likely making today. This is a mistake that I've seen done in almost every application that I've worked on in Microsoft or out of Microsoft. This mistake is really, really common. I'm going to demonstrate the code in C-sharp and .NET, but the idea stands regardless of the framework or the language that you use because it has to do with how you model your data. So let's talk about what the problem is, how to fix it, and how significant it is in terms of performance. Also, if you haven't yet, then smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and let's get started. So let's imagine that we have the following thing. We have a reminder, and this reminder has some title, and it also has a date in which the reminder is due. So let's say date time. Then we also have some user, and the user, let's say, has a name, and also has a subscription type where this subscription type is a simple enum that has, let's say, one of the following three options. It has a free, a starter, and a pro tier where if you have the free subscription, then you can create one reminder per day. If you have the starter one, then you can go ahead and create two per day. And if you have the pro, then let's say you can go ahead and create five daily or five reminders per day. Okay, so let's go ahead and create some reminders and then let's explain what the issue is. So that's what we have over here, reminder, reminder one, and let's say something, and same thing, let's say reminder two, and let's say that we have also the user, where the user is you watching the video, and the subscription type, let's say, is free, okay? Which means that if we try to set two reminders for this user, then it should fail because they have only one reminder per day. So let's say that we have also something like set reminder and let's pass it reminder one and reminder two. And let's go ahead and generate this method. And what we have is the following. So we have the two reminders. We're going ahead and adding the two reminders to the user or we're setting these two reminders. Now the question is, how do we go ahead and track the reminders in the user. So you might say to yourself, okay, this is pretty simple. All we need to do is say public list of reminder, and let's say reminders, and this has a getter, and by default, it, it is an empty list like so. Then all we need to do is we can go over here and say reminders.add, and we can add the reminder. But of course, we first need to check that we're not going over the number of reminders per day allowed for the subscription. So for that, what we need to do is we need to get the number of reminders for the day specified in the given reminder. Then we need to get the number of reminders allowed per day by the subscription type. Then we need to compare them. If it is less, then we can go ahead and create the reminder. Otherwise, let's say we'll throw an exception. So for this, we can go ahead and say var reminder count. We want to take or we want to count all the reminders in which the day itself is the same as the date specified in the reminder like so. Great, so this will give us the current number of reminders that we already have for the given day. Now let's go ahead and get the maximum number of reminders allowed for the subscription simply by saying max reminders per day, and this will equal to the subscription type, and then we can switch on this. If the subscription type is free, then one, if it is starter, then two, and if it is pro, then five, like so. Okay, so again, what we have is we're getting the reminder count, we're getting the maximum number of reminders allowed per day. If the reminder count is bigger or equal to the max reminders per day, then we can go ahead and throw over here a new exception. Let's say throw new exception, and I'll say too many reminders. Okay, so again, what we have is we created the two reminders, reminder one and reminder two, and we chose the subscription type to be free, which means that we can only create one reminder per day. So stepping into this, then we get the current reminder count, which should be zero in the beginning, great. The max reminders per day is one, as we expect. And then if it's greater than, and currently it's not, then we go ahead and we add the reminder. But for the second time, then we fail the if, we throw an exception, and we fail with the exception that we expect to get. Before we continue, I want to remind you that I have three comprehensive courses on Dome Train. So if you enjoyed this video, then alongside subscribing, make sure to check out these courses. Now, back to the video. Okay, so what's the problem with the current implementation? So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, every time we're creating a new reminder, 
then we go ahead and we iterate over all the reminders and we may have 100 reminders and it's a shame to go ahead and count all the reminders that we have on that day and instead perhaps we can create a mapping something like dictionary and we can say that this will be let's say only the date and this will be a list of the reminders per that day let's call it date to reminders map okay now that we have this mapping then we can simply go to the date specified in the reminder and see how many reminders we have in the list of reminders for that day so we can go ahead and say over here day and this will be date only from daytime and give it the reminder dot daytime then we can actually move all of this down to here and we can say that if the date to reminders map try get value of the specific day that we want right and this will be the list of reminders and the reminders dot count is greater or equal to the number allowed by the subscription right so max reminders per day then if it is greater or equal then over here we can go ahead and throw the exception and finally we can go ahead and save the reminder so we can go ahead and say if the reminders list is currently null then we want to set it to a new list then we can say reminders dot add and edit the given reminder and finally we can go ahead and add it to the map like so okay so again what we have is the change that we did is instead of storing one list with all the reminders and then going ahead and iterating over all the reminders counting when the day is the same day and then comparing that to the maximum allowed instead we have a dictionary where we have a direct mapping between the day and the reminders of that day okay raise your hand if you like this implementation and you think this is how it should be modeled well i don't think it should be modeled like this as well and the reason for that and this is the main mistake that i see in most applications and it has to do with how you model your objects so currently what we have is we have the reminder object contained inside the user object meaning that every time we fetch the user from the database so in a real application this is stored in some database we need to fetch along it all the various reminders but actually when we're setting a reminder we don't really care about the reminder itself we only care about the count of reminders for that day and it becomes even more extreme because in most applications when you have objects contained inside one another then it's usually not something small like this when you have a production application you'll probably also have over here like the description alongside maybe is dismissed then if we imagine the application sitting over here and over here we have the database i was excited that i drew the database so i decided to draw also a person <laughs> just testing my drawing skills okay so we have the person and they want to set a new reminder so every time they want to set a new reminder then the application needs to go to the database fetch however many reminders they already have it could be 10,000 reminders if the user has been using the application a long time where we don't really care about most of the reminders we only care about the count of the reminders for that day all right so let's say we have the following actions and in our application we mapped that this is something that happens a lot so based on our dashboards and metrics and logs we see that users set reminders a lot this is the action that happens the most out of the various actions in our system so if we see that this happens a lot then we want to make sure that we're not modeling the system in a way where we're fetching too much data over here because we also need to get it from the database but we also need to transfer it over the wire and then when we're handling it over here and storing it in memory then also it's very heavy and that we have garbage collection so what is the underlying issue and how do we solve it so the underlying issue is that when we go ahead and model our system we model the various objects that we have we want to make sure that we're creating the smallest possible objects that are self-contained to make a business decision so what do i mean by that is over here we're not creating the smallest possible object that we can because as we said we can simply store over here the date only and the count and then we would have a much smaller object that contains everything it needs to make that business decision which is whether or not the user can set a reminder we don't want to have this entire thing but instead what we want is we want to have here some count right so this will be the number of reminders for that day then over here we don't need to 
do count. Over here, we already have the reminder count, or reminders count. Then we can go ahead and compare this. And finally, we can go over here and simply increment it by one. Now, just to complete this example, so of course, we're now setting the reminder, but we're not actually holding the details about which reminders the user set inside the user object, right? So we're setting the reminder, but we're getting the reminder objects. We're not doing anything other than incrementing the count over here. So we're missing the data to correlate between the user and the reminder that they just set. So what we can do is we can add over here a private read-only list of GUID and call it reminder IDs. And let's initialize it to an empty list. Then let's add the ID property over here. So now that we have this, we're creating a new GUID, we're passing it to the reminder. So each reminder have, has a unique identifier. And when we set the reminder, then before we increment the count, let's say over here, reminder IDs dot add, and let's add it the reminder dot ID. Now that we have this, if we do want to fetch the user with all the reminders, then we can go ahead and join the tables. We have the IDs to correlate between the user and the underlying reminders, but we aren't suffering from the big latency hit that we would have had if we stored in the user object all the reminders. So the subtle mistake that is very common, and I want you to imagine your application that you're working on as well as I speak, is that we created an object that has too much data inside. When we look at our application from the outside and we see the actions that we take, it's better to have smaller objects that have less information, ideally only the data that's needed to make the business decisions and have them stored separately in the database where if we need, we can correlate between them and fetch whatever data that we need on demand. But in the default flow, when we just fetch one of the objects, then we get a skinny version and then we don't pay not for looking up a lot of data in the database, not having to pass all this data over the wire, not having to store it in memory in the application, materializing it via EF core, which of course afterwards there's garbage collection and we pay even more latency for that. So I hope that makes sense and you can already think about places in your application that you can make things a bit more efficient. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. Make sure to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.